everybody, welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix, and today I got I got Sage with me on on this. It's very cool. Yay! I'm, I'm still a bit winded from running up the stairs earlier, so my apologies. That was like 17 minutes ago. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was it was a long flight of stairs. It was about three steps. No, it's four. <laughs> Uh, I see. My bad, my bad. See, not only I had to walk up the stairs to get to the second floor, I had to walk up the, the porch steps, too. So that's, like, two sets of stairs. Wow, I can't believe you did that all by yourself. I did! And they didn't even need help! That's so brave! Oh, don't patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, it was my choice. And to spare Sage from having to read about two gay Italian men, we're reading about my... TV husband instead. And surprisingly, I just got a, a box dandy in today. Fan made, of course, because uh, the world hates Phoenix and I will never get <laughs> the original box dandy to save my life. But this makes up for it in fan merch. <laughs> yeah, I like how you say you spared me, but I'm still reading about but it, this. But it's fucking... when. But it's when Nublet. Don't be mean to Nublet. I'm always mean to nubble it. Also, I've been really wanting to read more of this, and the wheel hasn't been that generous to me, so... Uh -huh. <laughs> huh? Okay, yeah, sure. You know what? The wheel has been nothing but on my side, and I've had all these generous picks throughout this time. I don't think I've actually picked a single thing yet. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> I only landed on my choice twice and it has yet to do your ass. <laughs> I just think it hates me. And you know what? I'm willing to put a, a, a pound <laughs> on the wheel being not in my favor again. What if we get Piss Monkey again? Piss Monkey is dead. Not in our hearts, he is not. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead in my heart. <laughs> Why you gotta be so mean to Piss Monkey? He could've made it to heaven. You don't know. Also, piss he... Monkey was in hell. Also, he didn't die from an angelic weapon, so Piss Monkey is still very much alive. Anyway, let's stop talking about this monkey who likes to piss. Um, <laughs> we're, we're on chapter four of this. Uh, our name's Nublet. We work under Velvet. Vox was so impressed by our dress, apparently, that we designed some kind of shit for him, and now this is technically still our first day of working for him. And that's yeah. all I remember. <laughs> I love the little uh, dress to impress jokes that you just made. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Did, did I? <laughs> yeah, you <he laughs> said he was very impressed with the dress that we made. I didn't even mean to do that. I'm so funny. <laughs> DTI, dress to impress. Alright, this is just called four. Kind of like a, a, like a little guy behind me. Never mind. No! <laughs> Sage hates for, my plushies. Four reasons why I need to kill myself. <laughs> Number one, and there's just a picture of me. <laughs> Number one, Phoenix. Number two, Phoenix's children. <laughs> Number three, Luke. Phoenix's husbands. <laughs> What's number four? Myself. <laughs> Things that I fucking hate. My- You! Myself! Simon Cowell! I really hate Simon Cowell! <laughs> yeah, and I really hate Simon Cowell is just you, Pat yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I really hate Phoenix Flair! <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a real good thing I got myself a last name just for you to use and say that you wanna- you really- <laughs> <laughs> I really hate Phoenix Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I have a beautiful quarter here. Do you want to be heads or tails to read first? Uh, Tails never fails. Alright, tails you read, heads I read. Eh. If tails fails me... Oh, it did. <laughs> Do I have to read first? Yeah, I'm sorry. The rules are rules. Fucking hell! Okay. <laughs> I hate God. 
There isn't a god. Well, duh, you're here with me right now. <laughs> you're not god. Well, I was assume I was I was implying that because you're here with me right now that there isn't a god. So <laughs> there was one time that you labeled yourself as god. I still am Nublet the god of, of fingers, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Uh, right, here we go. Let's get back into this lovely story. Yay! <laughs> I returned to my office after standing around for another minute or so. What that girl said to me is stuck in my head now, and I just can't seem to forget about it. But for the time being, it would be best if I do. I woke up to my desk, picking up the paper with my sketch of the new set. Taking another glance at the clock, I noticed it to be 5.37pm. I might as well just give this to Vox a little early. Ooh, we're going in early. Oh my god, we get to see Vox early? <laughs> you don't. Okay. <laughs> I walk <laughs> You're like, you wait up. outside. You can, you're not allowed to be in here anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I just slammed the door in your face. Just wait here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I walk out of my office, paper in hand, and look around. Now, I wonder where I'm supposed to find him. It's not like I know where his office is. I would have asked him earlier if he hadn't completely shut me down. I decided to roam around, hoping to eventually find him somewhere. The floor is much less crowded now since it's getting late. Although, I could ask one of the other employees where Vox's office is. The demons that are still here seem pretty busy. The last thing I want is to be on someone's shit list. <laughs> I have never heard someone call it a shit list. Wait, you really never? No, it's like either a hit list or like a naughty list what? or something. No, I I'm not. It's, it's very common over here. Oh. Yeah. I, wow. I've, I've heard that phrase a lot. Well, I'm going to be using it from now on. You're number one on my shit list. Thank you. You're welcome. A blue spark pops up in the corner of my eye, and I instantly shift around on my feet to face that direction. Following the sudden appearance of that spark is the appearance of Vox. Ooh. That look. Sure. <laughs> Not already. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that little ability he has is honestly pretty freaky. How did he even know I was here? He approaches me from the opposite side of the room and sees to have read my mind. You know, I have eyes everywhere. <laughs> he turns. <sighs> he can like let let me read or. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh no, yeah, oh no. Sorry. <laughs> he turns his head toward the security camera on the ceiling. My brows raise a bit now when he points that out to me. I didn't realize he could see wherever he wanted through some form of technology. Well, fucking obviously. <laughs> oh, that does make sense. I pause for a moment before speaking again. I finished designing the new set. Let's see it. His lips curve upwards as he extends his hands out for the paper. I hold it over to him and watch as he holds it up to get a better look. I keep an eye out for any sort of reaction in his expression, but it remains indecipherable. That's a big word. <laughs> See, isn't it glad that you read first? <laughs> yeah, because you would have been like, in, 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 in the, um, in, uh, blah, All right. blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> he finally speaks. It's good. I knew hiring you would be useful. I'm filled with relief as I hear his words. Thank you. Is there something you want me to change or add? He studies my sketch for another moment before folding it and putting it in the pocket of his suit. Not at the moment, no. His usual grin appears on his face. If you keep it up, I'm sure you'll fit right in with the other lowlifes. He chuckles a bit as I immediately recognize his sarcasm. His humor is incredibly unamusing. I choose to ignore his statement. Right, do you need anything else? Actually, I do. He says, putting his hands behind his back. I need you to bring some new products over to Valentino's studio. It needs to be taken care of right away. Vox snaps his fingers, causing two uh, boxes uh, to uh, appear on the floor. <laughs> I don't think he has fingers, dog. 
Oh, shit. No blitz. No my bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I knew this would happen. <laughs> uh, pretend that never happened, guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I glanced down, eyeing them, knowing better than to ask what kind of products he's talking about. Okay, I can do that. Will I be allowed inside, though? The boxes are signed with my brand logo. You have nothing to worry about, he assures me in a slightly condescending manner. I nod in response, picking up the boxes. All right, I'll bring them over now. I turn to leave the office. Oh, and just one last thing. His voice causes me to turn around again. Don't sign anything Valentino hands you unless you want to be his next star, then by all means. He says with another chuckle. I feel my face heat up at the thought and shake my head. Oh, no, I won't be signing anything like that. All right then, he comments with a shrug. I'll let you know when you need to come into work again. I respond with a simple okay and leave the office rather quickly to avoid any further embarrassment on my end. Ooh, I mean, um, yeah, don't don't sign anything. Yeah, <laughs> please, yeah. He offers you anything, you slap, you get the bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> no, but please just get out. <laughs> get the fly swatter. <laughs> Nobody wants to see the nublet porno. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> In the context that we just use nublets as a as a thing, a word for fingers, <laughs> it just makes it sound like no one wants to see finger porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, loads of people want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. The walk to Valentino's was short. It was only a few minutes from the office. I find myself standing at the door of a large building as the muffled sound of loud music reaches my ears. I'm curious as to what the hell could be going on in there. Actually, knowing this is a porn studio, I don't think I want to know. Good. Yeah, stay oblivious, no blip. Yeah. Trust. They're just having a dance party in there, it's fine. It's an yeah. intense game yeah. of Twister. <laughs> Very intense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shift the boxes into one arm and knock on the door. After a minute, I knock again, but a little harder. It's unlike anyone's even going to hear me thanks to the obnoxious music playing from the inside. A frustrated sigh leaves my lips as I knock again and move boxes to sit on my other arm. Whatever is inside these boxes must weigh at least 20 pounds. Dear lord! Damn, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> was funny. I thought it would be funny. <laughs> I thought it was really funny, like clever. It wasn't. Uh, it, it, it was kind of clever. I, okay. I'll give you that. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome, yeah. <laughs> I stand where I am for another few minutes before calling it quits. As I'm about to leave, however, I hear the music come to a stop. The door slams open about a second later, causing my eyes to widen a bit. Some demon stands on the other side of the doorway, whom I assume must be a worker, and narrows his eyes at me. Is there a reason you interrupted a very important shoot? Authentic porn isn't easy to recreate, you know. <laughs> my brow raises as my eye twitches at his words. I'm here to drop off some product from Voxtech, I answer, ignoring his last sentence. He eyes the box in my hand and notices the legit brand logo. Fine, but make it quick, he says, stepping to the side to let me in. I nod and enter the building. It's a very dark atmosphere inside, and the large room consists of pink and reds. The interior is decorated with many hearts and detailed designs. I'd expect nothing less from Valentino. As I walk through the room in search of him, I get several glances in my direction. Some judgmental, others rather suggestive. <laughs> oh dear, Nublet, get out! Run! <laughs> Nublet, leave! <laughs> Don't let them take your nublets! <laughs> <laughs> Sweat begins to prick my skin as I grow a bit anxious while I look for Valentino. I don't want to be here a second longer than I need to. I'm surprised to see you here, Nublet, at the familiar voice I turn around. A few feet away from me stands Valentino, somehow appearing taller than I remember. He approaches me. 
I'm so sorry to interrupt, but Vox asked me to give these to you, I explain, referring to the boxes in my hand. He stops in front of me and chuckles a bit. He could have had them shipped over. I told him there was no rush, he says, gesturing some demon over. As the demon takes the boxes from my hand, I return my attention to Valentino. He said they needed to be brought over right away. Ah, well, he probably just wanted to waste your time, he mentions with some amusement in his tone. I bite back some curses and respond to him with some annoyance. Yeah, that sounds about right. He chuckles some more at my words. You know, I'm not too busy right now. Why don't you stay for a little? Get no! out! <laughs> don't leave do it! <laughs> I hesitate to answer his offer. On the one hand, staying is the last thing I want to do, but on the other, I'd hate to be rude to an overlord. No! Well, <laughs> well, only for a few minutes. He grins and walks past me. Follow me, dear. Please don't. Don't. <laughs> Please. No. 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 <laughs> Everything's going wrong. <laughs> if I have to read a Valentino suggestive scene, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. <laughs> Don't worry, me too. <laughs> if I have to hear you read a Valentino suggestive scene, I will too. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. What, you think I want to hear it? <laughs> what, you think I want to read it? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna catch up with him, although I'm unsure where he could be taking me. I'm very sure as to where he could be taking you. <laughs> This shit rated PG. This shit rated porn. <laughs> this shit gonna get demonetized on God. Yeah, this this is like at the, right at the beginning. This is like warning. This this Wattpad book cover reading contains not so good material. <laughs> <laughs> Click away now. Yeah, viewer discretion advised. <laughs> As I walk alongside him, I can't help but notice the demons around me. Almost all of them are dressed in some sort of lingerie or other revealing clothes. I suppose I wouldn't even consider them clothes due to how little they even cover. Valentino leads me inside a smaller and more private room. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I try to convince myself that there's nothing to worry about. I mean, I'm already dead, so it's not like much else can happen. Oh, you poor, sweet, innocent... Thing. <laughs> Just take one look at Angel. <laughs> he sits on a smaller couch and pulls out a long cigarette from his pocket. Although I'm not sh exactly sure if that's a specific name for it. I watch silently as he lights his cigarette and takes a long inhale, breathing out a deep red mist a moment later. Sit down, gorgeous. Don't be shy. I'm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I physically recoiled and, uh, uh, Okay Right I do as he says And sit on the soft couch across from his So is there something specific You wanted to talk to me about No not really He mumbles twirling the cigarette in his fingers uh, But you uh, were his oh, no I, <laughs> oh shit I uh, <laughs> Okay, let's redo this line over. Let's pretend it. Edit it out, edit it out. <laughs> no, not really. He mumbles, twirling the cigarette in his nublet. <laughs> but you work for Vox now, I see. My entire body temperature rises as he brings up that topic. Well, I do, but I'm still working for Velvet as well, I clarify. He nods and his lips curve upwards. Oh, I assume she doesn't know, does she? I know she's incredibly possessive over her staff. I freeze at his words and struggle to come up with a response. No, she doesn't, I reluctantly admit, now realising how screwed I may be. I can handle two jobs, so I'm positive she has nothing to worry about. After letting out another deep exhale of red mist, he answers me. That's probably true, and if not, I'd be careful around her, he chuckles. I nod, a bit worried because of his warning now. I will. If I'm honest though, I don't think she'll be firing me anytime soon either way. My statement may sound overconfident, but after my latest project I can safely say that Velvet has grown a soft spot for me. 
Valentino grins. Ah, she won't. She's smarter than that, he says silent, momentarily, and appears to be in deep thought before speaking again. Hmm, now I'm curious. You don't just make deliveries for Vox, do you? Because that would be such a waste of your talent. I shake my head. No, I designed his broadcast sets. Interesting, he comments. He had the right idea in hiring you, that's for sure. My brows raise a bit at his phrase. Thank you, although I've never exactly designed things other than clothes before. He must have been desperate, Valentino says with a shrug, placing the cigarette into his mouth. Or he just wanted to see someone struggle. I press my lips together at his insinuation. One of those, I'm sure. It's only been one day and I'm already starting to regret taking Vox up on this job offer. He laughs a little, seeming to pick up on my tone. I wouldn't take it personally, that's just who he is. A sadist? I question, raising a brow. He nods and chuckles again at my assumption. Mm-hmm. You're beautiful and have a sense of humour. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I smile slightly awkwardly as he speaks. Thanks. Suddenly, my phone buzzes from inside my pocket. Do you mind if I check this? He nods, leaning back in his chair. Go right ahead. I take out my phone, opening it to see a text from Velvet. My brows furrow a bit as I read the text. Hey darling, FYI, the show, the fashion show to promote the collection was pushed forward to tomorrow. But the event venue an, an hour early for preparations. That's it. Kisses, dear. My, <laughs> I always feel like Cruella. Like she texts <laughs> like Cruella and she speaks like Cruella. I haven't watched that movie, like, ever. Or the original 101 Dalmatians. You're just so uncultured, it's unreal. Yeah, you know, I gotta, like, brush up on my, my British, uh, culture, I gotta- <laughs> I gotta pull that shit up. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch Cruella or I'm shooting you. <laughs> okay, you know what? Okay, I could do that. <laughs> my eyes widen when I finish reading, and I stand from my seat. Shit, I have to go. Thank you for- taking this time to talk to me. He raises a brow, remaining glued to his chair. What's the rush? You're free to stay longer. Well, Velvet's fashion show is scheduled for tomorrow, apparently, and I need to make sure everything is ready. I explain, a little overwhelmed now. Of course, go take care of what you need to do, he responds with a rather genuine smile. I nod and return the smile. I walk to the door, but his voice stops me from exiting. One last question, actually. I turn my head, confused. Yes? If you're taking up new jobs, I'm ironically looking for a new star. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I scrunch up my nose, but manage to hide my disgust. No, thank you. Uh, good luck with that, though. I quickly leave the room, closing the door behind me. I knew that genuine smile was too good to be true. Your turn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta follow up after Valentino harassment. Can we at least get some Vox in here? <laughs> Why does Vox turn into a Cindere? Not a Cindere, like a Yandere, isn't it? Isn't that how like the description kind of described him, like going forward? Get a bit more possessive. What? When do we get that? <laughs> uh, Yandere is possessive. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what we need right now. Well, at least I need it. You don't. <laughs> I, do. I I really don't. <sighs> All right, chapter five. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <coughs> the next morning is mayhem. I've been at the venue since six thirty a.m. Though the show doesn't exactly start until ten. I know Velvet only asked me to arrive an hour early, but I had to ensure everything was perfect. As I predicted, everything was, in fact, not perfect. For the past three hours or so, I've been running all over the place, ensuring that the models had the correct clothes, making last-minute alterations, and modifying the guest list. My job may not require me to go above and beyond for this, but I can't help myself in situations like these. I need this fashion show to be as smooth as sailing. As I was sticking... As I was stitching up one of the models' dresses backstage, Velvet slams the door open. A look on her face is one of pure anger. Fashion shows made her ten times more violent than usual. Her, she glances around the room and her eyes land on the girl sitting on her phone. Vanessa! 
Oh, that's you. Wait, you're you're Velvet. I forgot. Oh, I am. Yeah, I you're since Velvet's British and you're British. Ah, you uh, right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Vanessa, why aren't you dressed yet? These shoes won't magically appear on your feet. <laughs> Velvet throws a pair of boots at the girl. It just fucking clunks her in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> She rolls her eyes and notices me. Almost instantly, her mood changes, and she approaches me as I continue to sew up the model's dress. At least someone is getting things done. Noblet, how are you, dear? Sleep well? No. <laughs> <laughs> Before I can answer, she continues. Good. Now we've got ten minutes till showtime, and I better not see on that runway what happened last time. She shouts. I cringe, remembering the instance she's referring to. When, at the last fashion show, one of the models tripped on over her heels and fell off stage. <laughs> I need that drawn. <laughs> I never th forgot that sight. Poor girl was fired, obviously, but she was unfortunately not forgotten. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Vanessa, how did you put your shoes on the wrong feet? Don't tell me you need someone to do it <laughs> for you. Velvet lets out one of an exaggerated sigh and walked over to the girl. <laughs> I turn my attention back to- I'm sorry, just- How the fuck did you mess up your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa's the type of, of girl that if you tell her that the the, the, the alcohol is in the left side, she pulls up like the, the L's in both hands. <laughs> <laughs> to tell which one's left and right. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I turn my attention back to the dress and finish stitching it up. After standing up and telling the model that she was good to go, I reluctantly approach Velvet. Everyone is ready to start whenever you are. She sw she spins around and crosses her arms. Help this disaster put on her shoes, then we'll be ready. How does she- she's gonna fucking trip. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that girl was, like, tripped over her shoes because Vanessa helped her and put him on the wrong feet? <laughs> Yes. Probably. <laughs> she scoffs, washing her hand. You know, whatever. She fucking waved her hand before leaving. <laughs> I rolled my eyes and kneeled in front of Vanessa, especially the boots to be on the right feet, laced them up. When I finish, she hurriedly uh, scurries off to in her place in line. I stand, taking a glance at the clock and reading it's 9.57. We're at least on- at least we're on time. Nobler, I don't pay you to doze off. Get over here. Ma'am, you don't pay me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly do what she says and stand right next to her. Is there something else you want me to do? She appears to be thinking for a moment. No, just enjoy the show, dear. She speaks with a kind grin and pushes past the curtains onto the runway. What's that one song? I was like, here comes the hurricane, bitch. Wow! <laughs> That's what plays at the here runway. Comes the hurricane. <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> Katrina! Katrina, Katrina, Katrina! <laughs> or you know what fucking Joyride probably plays while while they show off the shit. I love Joyride. Kesha, yeah. I... Kesha, mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> what, you know what, when's Beelzebub coming back? That's, that's what everyone wants to know. I want Beelzebub now! <laughs> You know they're thinking of doing a crossover episode where all all seven deadly sins are gonna come in, and and that's also gonna be including Lucifer. But they gotta work out some kind of thing with A twenty four. Did you just snort at me? <laughs> no, I growled. That's growling. <laughs> yeah. You can work on that. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> my like, I thought you were snorting like a pig. I didn't realize I was growling. <laughs> I thought I said no. something really funny. You're just like holding like you're laughing and trying to exhale. Exhale. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, I mean, uh, that was a really good growl, Sage. You did such a good job. Thank you. <laughs> this just certainly exceeded my expectations. And look at and it that exceeded my expectations. God damn it! Because <laughs> I could read that word until just right now. <laughs> I think Velvet would agree, though I can't see from the from backstage since I had to help the models with quick changes. I can hear much more applause than the previous show. As a bonus, we made it through without any models falling. 
Selva turns back, returns backstage after giving her small speech with a satisfied expression. Great performance, everyone. You've made me proud for once. Thanks. <laughs> you find yourself <laughs> smiling at her backhanded compliment. You take anything at that point. The models chat amongst themselves while heading to change into their dressing rooms, and I take a minute to organize some clothes onto the hangers and place them on the rack. Velvet speaks up from behind me. You did well today, but I'm sure you already know that. I turn around and smile. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad there was no complications. Thanks, Satan, for that. She laughs a bit and then pauses for a moment. Well, I'm off to mingle. You're staying for the after party, right? Oh uh, yeah, is Rox gonna be there? <laughs> <Ugh>. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ponder how I should respond to her question. I'm unsure if I should or not. She seems to notice my uncertainty and speaks for me. I insist you do. She says, taking my arm in hers as she begins to walk with me. Besides, I'm sure some of my guests want to meet the brain behind the gorgeous outfits. Her words brought a slight blush. Can we just read a velvet X reader? You're like, yeah, forget Vox. I'm into velvet now. No, I get it. No, I, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add it to the wheel. If, no, I'll see if I can oh, find oh. a book for it, and then I'll add it to the wheel. As like a little, <laughs> like, haha surprise. Anyway. Her words brought a slight blush to my cheeks, especially since Velvet is one that rarely gives such praise. We exit the backstage area, entering the nicely decorated room filled with lots of demons. They're all dressed formally for the occasion, leading me to assume that they're fairly wealthy and have relatively high status. I immediately felt out of place in their presence. Velvet takes me over to the beverage table with a wide range of alcoholic drinks. Stay here while I go fetch one of my old friends. BRB, hun. Oh, wait. Oh, god damn it. I read ahead. I'm so sorry. Wow. And, and just like that, I'm alone. I stand slightly awkwardly for about a minute before pulling out my phone. I have forgotten how anxious I get in these kind of situations. After checking my appearance for a minute, I slam my phone back in my pocket. Not wanting to be disrespectful as I wait for Velvet. I turn around I, yeah, I turn around to look at the drinks at the table, eyeing them as I debate to taking which one. Quite a show, am I right? Yeah, and then, and then it's Vox, and then I'm like, <laughs> Oh no. Why? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I turn no. around <laughs> I turn around at the the sound of his voice, finding Vox in front of me, wearing his usual shirt and dress shirt. My eyes widen a bit, not expecting him to be here. Although, it makes sense, considering he's so close with Velvet. I nod his question. It was. Does that mean you enjoyed it? He grins and sits closer to the table. His eyes gaze through the drinks. I did, surprisingly. These sorts of events aren't normally my scene. He says, picking up two full glasses and holding one out to me. What the fuck did you just hand me? Please say it's not Jaeger. I can't do Jaeger shots, bro. <laughs> Let's just hope it's not poison. Yeah. It's a love potion. <laughs> Cause I know you're poison. <laughs> I hasn't only really accept the glass in my hand. So, how come- So, how come you're here then? He chuckles a bit at my question. I don't have much of a choice. You know Velvet. She can be pretty ins insistent. He rolls his eyes, bringing the glass to his lips and drinking some. I nod to his words. That's true. A brief silence passes as he speaks again. You know, I have a bro I had a broadcast this morning using the new set background. Ratings were higher than normal. Good. That means we're good at our job. Do we get a promotion? <laughs> Please. Can we need to eat? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. I blink a couple times. Oh, really? That's good to hear, I say, taking a small sip of my drink. You'll be glad to know that now I plan on keeping you around for a while. You can, I can use a bright mind like yours, he adds. I lower the glass in my hand. Thank you, I appreciate that. In all honesty, I'm not sure whether to be glad or nervous knowing that he'll be my boss for longer than I anticipated. Like, we're, we're anticipating, like, yeah, my ratings were absolute shit, so, uh, you're fired. And we're like, thank fuck. 
And they yeah. were like, damn it, I did too good of a job! <laughs> <laughs> From the corner of my eye, I noticed Velvet approaching with an annoyed expression. I, I couldn't can't... find her, oh, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> she raises a brow at Vox and then narrows his eyes at me. What are you two talking about, hmm? I hesitantly come up with a reply, so Vox does. I was telling Nublet how I'm... How impressed her designs were, he explains in his usual calm and collective tone. Ha! That's unlike you, Velvet. Uh, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where does that say that in the script? <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Velvet turns into an Animal Crossing character and was like, <laughs> 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 Though it blurts out. <laughs> Quit bothering my little star. She's uncomfortable, can't you tell? If it wasn't uncomfortable before, I sure am now. I speak up. No, it's alright. I don't mind, I promise. I reassure. She crosses her arms and it seems as if she can see right through my lie. If you say so. Anyway, I've got to go talk to some potential buyers. I'll see you in the morning, dear. I watch as she leaves, wandering off to who knows where. It's insufferable. <laughs> that's that's your friend. <laughs> She's insufferable. Vox mumbles. Well, I gotta go bother someone else now. Oh, and I'd like for you to come to work tomorrow. My brow lifts at his request, wondering if if he didn't just hear Velvet say that she's that she'd be seeing me tomorrow. Maybe he didn't realize. I'll be at my main job though. Yeah, I know, he said with a laugh. Not fucking deaf. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Why Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> okay, then why did you ask me that? I lifted my head, confused at his logic. He takes a small sip of his drink. That damn smirk was still plastered on his face. Because I need you to design another set, obviously. You can come in when you finish at Velvet's. I finished at six. Oh, God. Working nine to five, and then five to nine. <laughs> oh my life! <laughs> <laughs> I finish at six. I did pan, expecting him to realize his absurd request. He places his empty glass on the table. Perfect. What's the issue? Uh, well, sir, I need to do this thing called sleep, eat, hydrate. <laughs> 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 I I began, but. It, but let out an exaggerated sigh, figuring out, figuring he was trying to argue was useless. Nothing, I'll be there. I know you will, he said with a grin. I'll see you in the office tomorrow. Little star. Oh, How nice, he called us a little nickname that Velvet just called us earlier as a callback. That's so awesome. I love Vox. <laughs> That's so cheesy. Shut up. <laughs> let me have this, alright? <laughs> uh. He chuckles as he walks past me. A stand of anger contorts on my face after hearing him call me that. Who the hell does he think he is? I can't stand people with egos that high. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a choice when it comes to tolerating Vox. Working for him is a nightmare in its own, and though I hate to admit it, maybe I just can't handle this. <laughs> maybe if he doesn't want to fire me, maybe I can just quit myself. I don't think that's gonna work, YN. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work, Nublet. Yeah, we're gonna go in like, I like to turn in my two week notice, and he's like, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, about that, nah. He just takes it and just rips it, and you're like, alright, so I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what time are you getting up tomorrow? What time are you gonna be here? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> you're like, aren't you gonna, like, look at my thing I just gave you? He's like, no, that doesn't matter. <laughs> that? No. Nah, I don't know why you waste you paper. <laughs> whatever you give me can't be that important, so whatever. Yeah. Alright. Number six. Huh, that's funny. You know why? Because you said I'd be working at six and now it's six. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I'm sensitive. That was horrifying. You're horrifying. Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Let me read. Okay. 
It's the morning after the fashion show and I evolve a plan on my way to work. I can now acknowledge that I accepted Vox's job offer too quickly. It's only been a couple of days, but somehow I've grown to dislike him already. Besides, I'm already super busy working for Velvet. The last thing I need is an additional stress, even if it makes me more money. So, at 6, when I go to Vox Tech, I will politely resign. I can only hope Vox will take the news as well. Who am I kidding? There's no chance he will, but he can't force me to stay. Yeah. Yes, he can. Yeah, well, how many chapters are there? <laughs> oh, my God. There's 25 chapters, Nubble It. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I enter the company doors and head to my office. Before I reach it, I hear a loud voice. Nubble It! I flinch at the sudden call of my name and spin around to see Velvet right in front of me. The company is at stake. My eyes widen in worry at her words. What's going on? One of the dresses you made has a tear. She grabs my shoulders, shaking me around. I blink a couple of times, slightly startled at the jostling. That's all? She drops her arms and shrugs. Hmm, now that you say it, I may have just been exaggerating. I let out a relieved sigh. Okay, okay, how big is the tear and how did it happen? It runs from the bottom to the waistline, she informs, then crosses her arms. Vanessa handed it to me after the show. She utters the girl's name with distaste. Were the seamstresses unable to stitch it back up? She shakes her head and groans. Since it's the only one, they had nothing to compare it to, apparently. Those good-for-nothing morons. That's fine, I'll fix it. I force a polite smile through my irritation. Her mood instantly shifts to a pleased one. Come along then, I don't have all day. She walks past me, expecting me to follow. By the way, we gained two new sponsors yesterday. They kept going on and on about how much they loved the new collection. My face lights up at her words. That's great. How relevant are the two of them? I like the way you think, she begins with a grin. They're fairly popular. Most importantly, they pay well. I nod as she leads me into a small secluded room. I'm glad things worked out. She puts her hand on the side of my arms and sets me down in front of a sewing station. I notice the dress lying on the desk and carefully take it into my hands. I hold it up, running my nublets through the rip that Velvet was talking about. I did it! Yay! <laughs> it was pretty large, but nothing I can't handle, I'm sure. I'll start right away, it shouldn't take too long, only a few hours. She pats me on the head with a grin. What would I do without you? She pauses and lets out a small hum. How would you feel about a promotion? My head tilts up to look directly at her, surprised at her question. I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. She smiles, resting a head, uh, uh, resting a head on her hip. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. I was about to say head. Phoenix, help me. I can't. <laughs> You're plaguing me <laughs> with your messed up of work. Yeah, you got the brain tumor I have. <laughs> Oh god, oh, okay. <laughs> she smiles, resting her hand on her hip. Once you finish patching up the dress, then we can talk. Got it? Got it, I assure, falling short of any other words due to still being in a bit of shock. I'll be in my office if you need me, but try not to, she says, leaving me with those words as she exits the room. I've been working for Velvet for years and never would have expected a promotion that exceeded my current position. This, strangely enough, was something I thought I could only dream of. Not only could it be a potential opportunity for me, but I, haven't e I have even more of a reason to resign from my side job at VoxTech. I flip the switch on the sewing machine and it buzzes to life. This promotion is as good as mine and to Vox. I have two words, good riddance. Stitching the dress, in fact, did not only take a few hours, it took practically all day. I had completely forgotten about how many small details there were. I lean back in my chair, sweat pricking my hairline as my tired eyes drift to the clock. 6.34pm. I didn't realise it was that late. I stand up, holding back a yawn as I fold the dress into my arms and leave the room. As I walk toward Velvet's office, I notice many co-workers packing up to go home for the day. 
If only I didn't have to make a pit stop at Voxtech after work. I let out a deep breath. Hopefully, if all goes well, I won't have to see him again after today. Ooh, Nublet, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> Good news for you, though, Phoenix. I'm I reach Vel- Voxtech, alright? Are you eating? Cotton candy? Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got that fried chicken looking uh, cotton candy. <laughs> I do. My hand. Disgusting. Fuck you. <laughs> I reach Velvet's door and knock. When I don't receive an answer, as I usually do, I knock again. Still, no answer. I stand impatiently at her door for another minute before hesitantly opening her door. As I peer inside, I find a dark, empty room. I walk inside up to her desk and place the dress neatly on the side. After closing the door behind me, my phone buzzes in my pocket. I slide it out and press the notification from my mailbox. What is that buzzing? No, oh, it's, a, it's a lawnmower in the background. <laughs> I thought your phone buzzed. I was like, holy shit, the timing. <laughs> I wish. No, it's just a lawnmower going crazy outside. Ah, uh, I see, I see. <laughs> There's an email from Velvet in my unread. So I click on it. So, about that promotion, I was thinking of a raise of about 10k a month. Let me know what you think, V. Major <laughs> Hey, a month? I would fucking die. <laughs> you know the merch I could get? I was just thinking, like, them on the merch we could get with that. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't even have to worry about, like, getting old merch because I could just buy it, whatever the price. I don't need yeah. to think about it. Exactly. You know? Or you can just be like me and just buy it anyway. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> My jaw physically drops at the email. I have to reread it at least three times to ensure I'm not seeing things. I bite down on my tongue to prevent myself from shrieking in excitement. I replied to her email immediately, saying that it's perfect, and I thank her for her consideration. I take another brief minute to collect myself as I read the time. 6.52. Shit. I told Vox that I ended work practically an hour ago. Hurriedly, I slip my phone back into my pocket and head to the building's elevator. I enter and press the button to take me to the floor for Vox Tech. I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror and take a quick moment to fix my hair and adjust my clothes. Once the elevator chimes and the door opens, I exit and turn my head. I never found out where Vox's office was, so I don't exactly know where to look for him first. Suddenly, I pick up the faint sound of cameras clicking and voices down the hall. My brows raise and I follow the direction of the noise. As I turn the corner, I discover what all the commotion is about. I find a bunch of interviewers and reporters loudly speaking over one another as they crowd around someone. About the exterminations, can you guarantee the safety of your customers? I make out one of the voices. I approach the group out of curiosity, though I have a fairly good idea of who these questions are directed towards. Rest assured, all customers of Voxtech can rely on our home security system, I hear a smug voice say in response. Does it guarantee safety from angels? I hear another voice ask, followed by a million inaudible questions. I push through the crowd a bit, trying to see through. Take it from me when I say you can trust us with your money and your safety. I pick up on his words, and within a second the reporters go quiet. I hear footsteps leaving the area and finally push past the demons. I step back, my brows furrowed in confusion as I take their identical pulsing red eyes into account. They all seem dazed or caught in some sort of trance, and their bodies are frozen in place. I turn my head watching Vox as he walks further down the hall. I give one more look at the reporters before following behind him. I notice him enter a room to what I presume to be his office, and I reluctantly knock on the door. A moment later, I hear his voice. Come in. I open the door, slowly closing it behind me as I stand by the doorway. He's leaned back in his chair, his legs propped up on the desk as his eyes meet mine. I was beginning to think you weren't coming in. He raises a brow with that signature grin of his, seeming to expect a reason as to why I'm so late. I nod a little, thinking how I should respond. 
sorry, couldn't be here sooner. I was very busy today. Just don't let it happen again, yeah? He leans his arms back a bit. I paused before speaking, finally deciding to break the news. Well, I wanted to talk to you about that. My job here, I mean. His smile falters a bit, now looking at me a bit more seriously now. What about it? I think it's best if I resign, I start. I accepted this job not realising it would be too much for me to handle. I'm too busy and I don't want to cause any issues for you or your enterprise. He doesn't answer me at first, causing me to internally freak out. I tried wording it in the best way possible, but I can't help but get the feeling that he's going to lose his shit on me. To my complete shock, he laughs. I blink a couple of times. Simply <laughs> perplexes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not happening. His <laughs> laughter slowly it. dies down. We predicted it! Yeah. <laughs> like, to a T, which is kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> well, we know Vox's <laughs> behavior too well. <laughs> Have you read this before? No, I wish. I wish I read a book this good. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I tilt my head and step closer to his desk. Excuse me? Let me rephrase that. He takes his legs off the desk and leans his elbow on top. You're not going anywhere. My eyes narrow in anger at his audacity to even talk like this. I have every right to leave if I choose to do so. Nothing is keeping me here. His lips curve upwards. Isn't there though? A moment later, a piece of paper zaps into his hand and he holds it towards me. See for yourself. I grab the paper from him and read it to myself. My eyes slowly widen when I recognize it as the contract I had signed for him. At the very bottom, I notice the fine print. I slam the paper onto his desk. You didn't care to mention that signing this would require me to work here for the next two years? Oops. I didn't force you. <laughs> it's hardly my fault that you didn't bother to read the conditions, he speaks in an amused tone. I hold back some curses running through my mind. You didn't give me the time to. He shrugs, his grin more prominent than ever. And you still signed. I can only stand still, looking at him in disbelief as I process everything. For the next two years, I'm stuck working for this asshole against my own will. I would never have signed without knowing about this, but he's right. I shouldn't have picked up that pen without knowing what I was about to sign. I rack my brain, trying to think of some kind of loophole but anything i think of is useless there's no way out of this he pulls me out of my imagination as if he knows exactly what i was thinking i pause before answering if there truly isn't a way i'm not giving him the satisfaction of seeing me so defeated fine so you wanted me to design another set correct he smiles at my compliance i know that's what i told you yesterday but i think that can wait he pauses the silence is killing me I have a different task in mind. My eyes hang with fatigue as I tread along the sidewalk. Pavement. Oh, oh. Slang <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's a sidewalk. <laughs> no, it's a pavement. <laughs> did you just burp at me? I did. <laughs> How dare you. I'm sorry. I'm not. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> it 12.20 in the morning and I just left the office. I suppose Vox thought it would be funny to keep me there so late to do a task as stupid as going through emails. I'm positive he just wanted to provoke me or prove a point. I roll my eyes, scoffing quietly to myself. Why is it that after such a good day I have to let Vox ruin it? As much as it pisses me off, the truth is, there's nothing I can do. On that note, I may not be able to do anything to change the truth, but surely a couple of drinks can help take my mind off of it. Let's go, alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, we love alcohol. Alright, how do you feel? Um, I feel... Uh, yay! Yay! <laughs> It, oh, it was better than the SMG, so I'm glad that I read this instead. What, you didn't like the other book I picked out? No! <laughs> that was... <laughs> he screamed that. He's like, no! 
I hate, hate the fucking men. <laughs> yeah, but I like at least one of them in the thing, so like, please don't ruin this for me. <laughs> All right. Well, your 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 silence is deafening again. So I I guess we should just go ahead and spin the wheel and hope for uh, something good. You know, like. Verasica X Reader? Yeah. yeah. We know that's not gonna fucking happen though, <laughs> don't we? Someone's a little angry right now. <laughs> I'm so angry. I hate this wheel. Alright. We have a lot of good options. We got Chaggy, we got Moxie and Millie, we got Deadpool and Wolverine. We can finish up the Cherry Bomb, X Serpentious. Just, uh, just tell me when to, to press the middle thing, you know? Hmm, let me think. Uh, now. <gasps> Kaede Suichi! <laughs> Fun fact, I can't actually see the wheel, so... <laughs> you can? <laughs> <laughs> no! Did I feel I'm doing? <laughs> I can't wait, even see it. Wait, hold up. <laughs> Don't can't see it! What do you oh, mean? there it is. Do you want me to redo the wheel oh. then so you can't see it? Or do you <laughs> if like If you this? want to. Or do you want Ka Kaede and Suichi? I don't mind it. Okay, we'll we'll do Kaede and Suichi. I haven't read I haven't read Dang and Rapa fanfiction since like high school, so it'll be it'll be cool to read again. That's a lie. What do you mean? Because there was um, you did a reading with Minho, didn't you? No. Minho doesn't know what Dangarapa is, so... Who the fuck did you do it with, Jolene? What, the the one-shots? Yeah! That was way back in the day. That was with my boy Koda. Well... Guess... Wasn't there one about Toko being a stalker? Oh, uh, that's Philip. Philip. <laughs> See, I, mean, I, I, knew, I, I know my stuff. Yeah, you're like, um, actually, at this timestamp, on, on this date, you <laughs> you uploaded this video. Uh, I don't care that much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so genuine, too. You're like, yeah, I don't give that much of a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just my tone. It's okay. I'll forgive you eventually. <laughs> Most of the time when I say stuff, I don't realize how badly it sounds until it comes out and then I'm like, oh shit, it's too, it's too late to take it back now, that sounded so horrible. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm like looking at you like the hamster with the wide eyes, just like with a violin in the background, just sad. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually care that much. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't say aw, oh, don't fucking, don't patronize me, you just made fun of me two seconds ago. <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, how did you enjoy the re some of this, uh, Vox X Reader? It, it's, it's, it's a good story, I'll give it that. Good, good, I'm, I'm glad you're having fun with it. <laughs> Character could be better, you know, the choice of uh, who we're deciding to... Um, fall in love with could be better, it could, you know. Well, you could say that TV. again. <laughs> it, it, TV. It, it's a TV. I, I said I agreed with you. I didn't disagree. <laughs> yeah, but you like the TV. Okay. Damn. Don't okay me. <laughs> you know when Make that video game <laughs> comes out of called like date date everything or date anything where I'm going to go date the TV, and no one can stop me. Please don't. If there is not a TV in that game for me to romance, I'm not playing the game. <laughs> please, please don't let there be a TV for them to romance. <laughs> let me have this. Mind you, when does God ever listen to me anyway? <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. You, yeah, that's, that is right. <laughs> well, anyway, besides from Sage's, like, uh, m mental... Uh, breakdown that's going on. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, on screen is a playlist of all the other Wattpad book club readings I've done, including 
Um, ones I did with Sage, and then there's Jolene, and then there's Minho, and that's a, that's the main three right now, so I, just, I don't know, just deal with that. And then on screen is also the last Wapa book club reading I've done. Probably the one I did with Jolene, where I got sold for a hundred million dollars, so that that's kind of cool. And then Yeah, <laughs> you say that that was the funniest reading you've ever done. It was. How <laughs> dare you? I'm right here. I'm sorry. That was the, the first funny- time I've made Jolene laugh that hard. <laughs> so I, I did feel a good job. I feel challenged. I feel out of place. The next Wattpad book club reading we do, you're just gonna try extra hard to be really funny. <laughs> I'm always really funny! <laughs> Don't make me cry! No, you are, you are, you are! It's, it's fine! You're fine! Anyway... <laughs> Anyway, my, my, you want to say anything else? You want you want to tell the camera anything else? Yes, yes, actually. Okay. Um, guys, you know how Phoenix said that there's a playlist with all the rock pack book clubs, and you know there's Minho, there, there's Jolene, there. <gasps> there's me. You can go watch all mine because I'm the best one. You can watch all the Adam ones that we just made fun of Adam for being a big bag. <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. can go watch all the. Really cool ones that I suffer for. Yeah, I like so. the SNG three four one. Yay! <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but anyway, my name is Phoenix. That was Sage, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.